house. And there's coming a time where we'll worship him in spirit and in truth. I will. silent, just exalt his name. Not a single one of you should be silent this minute.
shall take the reading of the word of God from the book of Matthew chapter number 16 and can we read From 16 to 18. Please, 16 to 19. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16 to 19. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not received had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Please let us pray. Father, we glorify your name this morning. We bring the praise of our lips, the fruit of our lips unto you. Accept it and be gracious towards all of us this morning. The word that you have given unto us this morning, I pray that the Spirit of God gives every one of us understanding hearts. May hearts be changed. May souls be changed. May flesh be healed. May hope return unto your people. May faith come unto many. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us look at Matthew Matthew 16, uh, verse 18. Matthew 16, verse 18. Can we all read this? 
ready go. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Before the church began, Jesus Christ had prophesied that the church will be encountering what we call the gates of hell. I repeat that. Before the church began in the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, Christ Jesus himself had predicted that the gates of hell would encounter the church. So the church, before it, its inception, forces of darkness had gathered and they were determined to fight or battle it. It is not for you and I to discount what the scripture says and say that we are not in any spiritual battle. I think last week I spoke about spiritual warfare. So I want to reiterate that point that the church is in battle. The church is in a spiritual warfare. What it means, therefore, is that there are forces of darkness. In fact, Jesus calls it gates of hell. Let me just make this point before we continue. In the olden days, or the Old Testament days, cities have walls, and they have several gates. Now, the entry point which the Bible calls the gates, just like we all have gates to our homes, the cities have gates. But um, community discussions or political discussions are held at the gates. They are held at the gates. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, the Bible is saying that this gate is not gates to cities, but gates to hell. Gates to what? Hell. And definitely, if anybody went to hell or anybody would go to hell, that means that he has had a brush with Satan. The person has had a brush with Satan. So, to make it brief, Gates of hell is talking about where Satan takes decisions with his, with his, his, his cohorts, his demons, his principalities, his powers, his spiritual weakness in high places. That is what it means. In other words, there are forces of darkness who always are planning to undo the institution called the church to frustrate it, to cause it to cause it. So Jesus says, even though these gates of hell, principalities, powers, spiritual weakness in high, heavenly places, they gang against the church, I will continue to build my church and they will not prevail. It's a good place to say amen. amen. Now, I want you to appreciate what I'm talking about this morning. And to draw your mind that when we talk about the church, it's not about the name absentee. It's about the people who have gathered with a common vision at a particular place. And over the years, they've been trying to build the church 
edify themselves, bring maturity. So for example, if you take this room here, we are the people who have gathered here with one goal or one vision to build the house of God. So when Jesus said, I'll build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail, it's not talking about the name absentee. It's not talking about the four or the rectangular building in which we are sitting this morning. It's talking about you. My life is built by Jesus. Your life is being built by Jesus. So when the Bible says that I'll build the church or my church and the gates, the principalities, the demons will not prevail against the church. He's saying that the demons will not prevail against you. They will not prevail against you. That's what he's saying. Amen. I will build my people and the gates of hell will not prevail against them. If you look at Acts chapter 6, oh, pardon me, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, downwards, verse 10 downwards, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. You see, <laughs> the Lord knows that the church will encounter these powers. So the admonition here is that be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Church, be strong. So if the church is you and I, the word for us is this. You must be strong in the law. I must be strong in the law. I must be strong in the law. And in the power of, and the power of his might. Hallelujah. Why do we be strong in the law? The next verse. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The church must be strong. You must be strong. I must be strong because we have what we call the tricks, the treachery of the devil. So we become strong by putting on the armor of God. Continue. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So you see, you and I are contending against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world. The moment we talk about rulers, it means that these are spiritual authorities. Again, these are spiritual, again, spiritual, there are spiritual authorities. And in the realm, in the realm of the spirit, pardon me, they can, they can uh, uh, make somebody uh, uh, they can, oh, what, what I, was going to, I was going to use? They can make somebody sick. They can impoverish people. What do you mean that they have the authority to impoverish people? Maybe go back into the history of some of you, your families. And you know that there are certain things that exist there. When they decree <laughs> that you, it will not be well with you, you can start well. By the time you get to a certain age, you see that everything is grinding to a halt. Whether you believe it or not, this is what the word of God says. The church will fight spiritual wickedness in high places. They will fight rulers of darkness. Darkness because... You don't see them. They operate both in the day and in the night. But during the day, you don't see them. You don't see them. Sometimes they visit you in the day. 
They don't come there in the night. Well dressed. You serve them. Your food, your drink. And by the time they are leaving you, they have left behind. <laughs> Demons. Your children go to sleep that night and they can't sleep. And that is the beginning of trouble in your home. So we, we are fighting. We are contending these powers all the time. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against them. The church is always in a warfare. Last week, I spoke about Demetrius. How many of you remember Demetrius? The book of Acts chapter 19. Earlier on, Paul has said that an effectual door had been opened to me in Ephesus, but there are many adversaries. There are many church. There are many speakers. There are many, many adversaries. What are adversaries? They are enemies. They are enemies. If the church has an enemy, it means that you have an enemy. If the church has an enemy, then it means you have an enemy. Hallelujah. Because of the church of Jesus Christ, there are some people who didn't want to look at my face. They wish I were dead. And you, as well. But I decree this morning, the Bible says there's no peace for the wicked. Again, there's no peace for the wicked. Anybody contending with the church, I mean you, there will be no peace for that person. Hallelujah. There will be no what? So Demetrius was in Ephesus and saw the word of life being preached, people with curious arts were handing over their witchcrafts and, and tokens of the cause in which they were in. And they were giving up on witchcraft and spiritism. But Demetrius, who was the one who was perpetuating the, 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 the curious art, spe spe specifically the, the, the goddess Diana, saw that, listen, this, this gospel of life, if it continued to be preached, then we are going to get out of business. So he rallied people around to oppose the preaching of the gospel. They started arresting Paul's servants like Gaius and Co. And were determined to stop them. Listen, some of the people that will oppose the church, they are human beings. Human beings, but there is a spirit behind them and that spirit drives them to oppose the progress of the church. Can I get your amen? amen? They'll do everything to discourage you. And yet they don't know that they are being used by the devil. Hallelujah. So Demetrius did that. You can read that in the book of Acts chapter 19, 24 downwards. When the church began, the first or the early church, in the book of Acts chapter 4, in the book of Acts chapter 4, 
The first day the church began, souls were converted. And souls continue to be converted. Signs and wonders were following them because the apostles heeded to the instruction of Jesus. The apostles heeded to the instruction of Jesus. Say, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these are the signs that shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Why is Jesus saying that they will cast out devils? Because Jesus had already spoken or predicted that the, 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 the arch enemy of the church is the devil. You and I have the responsibility to cast the devil out. Out of our midst. The demon responsible for poverty, you and I have the responsibility to cast it out. Don't pretend. I know you don't like poverty. If you like poverty, raise your hand. If you like poverty, raise your hand. You and I are supposed to cast it out. That's what the Bible says that Jesus came and said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Luke 14, Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. And among those who preach the gospel to are the blind and also the poor. The poor. The poor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, as Paul and Co preached the gospel, and souls were being won, and Jesus continued to increase the church, the Bible says that, and were added to the church daily, such as should be saved. People were being saved on a daily basis and were being added by the church. And one time, signs began to explode. And the people in Jerusalem, guess what? They were not just ordinary people. They were people within the church. They were the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the Sahindris. They arrested Peter and Cole and said, why are you preaching in the name of the Lord? The book of Acts chapter 17. Pardon me, chapter 4 verse 17. Acts chapter 4, verse 17. Are we there? But, okay, so let's take it from, let's say, 15. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. They had arrested them. There were some wise leaders among them who warned them to be careful lest they fight God. So they asked those arrested to step aside. And then they began to have their own conference. And they said, What shall we do with these men? For what shall we do with these men? For that Indeed, a notable miracle had been done by them. It's a manifest to all. Am I reading well? All right, let me take it again. What shall we do to this man? For that, indeed, a notable miracle had been done by them. It's a manifest to all 
them that dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. <laughs> Listen to me. If you are a member of the church, God will work a work in your life. And your family members cannot deny the change that are taking place in your life. They may not like it. They may not utter their words to say it, but they know that something has taken place in your life. See, a notable miracle had taken place and all the people in Jerusalem have seen it. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us strictly or straightly threaten them, threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. Let's stop the people so that they don't continue to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them not speak henceforth. The Bible used the word threat. The Bible used the word the Bible used the word threat. Thank God for the constitution of Ghana. If somebody threatens your life, you can report him. But some of these threats that we are talking about, <laughs> it's a spiritual threat. When sickness falls on you, it's a threat to your life. True or false? True or false? When your business is overturned, and nothing is happening with you, with you. Is it not a threat to your finances? It is a threat. Let's continue. But that is spread no further among the people. Let us straight, straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. That is the name of Jesus. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, at all. Nor teach in the name of. It's also not in the name of Peter. Peter was not the one building the church. It was Jesus who was building the church. And they didn't want the church to progress, so they forbade them. I'm making the point that the church is perpetually in a battle with unseen forces. Meaning that you are perpetually in a battle with unseen forces. Hallelujah. Just like my daughter saw a woman who came to my house on my birthday and brought me food, and when she stepped out, she manifest into some creature and turned towards my daughter and saw that my daughter was watching her. And she said, oh, I see. This is who you are. And she said, you people, you people, why, is, why, why are you people always praying? For the souls of men. We are praying for church growth. Why are you always doing that? You people are disturbing us. May I ask a question? It's, 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 uh, I don't mean you have to answer. <clears throat> are we disturbing any of you here? Am I disturbing any of you? Okay.
Thank you. In case we are disturbing anybody here, get ready. There's going to be more disturbance. Hallelujah. So, they commanded them not to speak in that name. Let's continue. The next verse. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge yourselves. Judge yourselves. It's just like saying that, why is it that these days, Pastor, now, you know, he's talking about evangelism every now and then, and it's making us feeling uncomfortable. Somebody visited me in the course of the week and said, hey, Papa, you gave it to us, Pao. Did I give it to you? Did I give it to you? But my job is to give the word to you. And I've been giving you the word all the time. So what is it that you gave it to us? Get ready for more giving. You know why I will give it to you the more? Peter and John said that. What you are threatening us with to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Is it, is it right for us to listen to you or to listen to God? It's God who has commissioned me to preach this message. And I'm going to preach it until every one of you repents. You know why I'm going to do that? I'm going to do that because... You're not obeying the instruction of Jesus Christ. It's an act of. Lest anybody say I'm say, saying that you are under the power of the devil. I didn't say so. I didn't say so. But the truth is that when anybody who has been born again, he he. He eats the bread that is the flesh of Jesus Christ and drinks the blood. And that person comes to tell me that I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to go and preach the gospel. I'm, I'm afraid to go and preach the gospel. Then check yourself whether it is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the redemptive blood. It's the purchasing power of salvation. How can you drink the blood of Jesus Christ and you are timid. How can you drink the blood of Jesus Christ and you cannot proclaim the gospel? You cannot pray for people who are sick around you. Is it wrong when I say that you are under... Finish it. What an enemy is doing that he's restricting you and your blessings. How many of you are with me? The line is drawn. Those who are for the Lord step out, cross the line. Those who are not for the Lord, you can remain behind the line. Last week, I told you I went to Matrice's house. After we have evangelized. And she was, she was relaxed in her store because she had pondered for food and had eaten. So I said, Eh. <laughs> you have found it for food where you have eaten. Next week, 
your fufu, you will pan it at 2 o'clock. You and I will step out. Thank God yesterday when we gathered, we were waiting for them to come so that we pray and disperse. Matrix came with two young men. Preached to them. Spoke to them. Are you with me? Whilst we were waiting for help, on the way coming, she was holding two young men and was preaching the gospel to them. I thought she would come. And then she took them. She was going to check their homes. So I was like, so, so, so she was sitting down all this while. Maybe she thought that she couldn't do it. Maybe she, she was ashamed. Maybe she thought that she didn't know what to say. But she didn't even get there and she was preaching the gospel. Every one of you, you will preach like matrix. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, you will go out and preach like matrix. And I'll tell you the reason why. When the Bible says that I'll build my church, but Jesus Christ you knows He's building the church through you and I. And anybody who tries to build a church with Jesus Christ is opposed. I've, I've explained to you from the book of Acts 18 how Demetrius opposed Paul. Now we have seen the Sahindris opposing Peter and John about preaching the gospel. If you also try to preach the gospel, you will be opposed. You are not better than Jesus. You are not better than Peter. You are not better than John and, 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 and Co. In the time a believer makes the attempt to preach the gospel, he will be opposed. He will be opposed. One. Personally, the devil doesn't want you to prosper. John's Gospel, chapter 4, chapter 4, 13 to 36. Sorry, John's Gospel, chapter 4, 33 to 36. John, chapter 4, verse 33 to 36. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Have any man brought him ought to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him, that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. The harvest is what? Church. The harvest is what? Are you here? The harvest is what? Ready. Ready. Don't give excuse and say that, oh, I will go in four months' time. Or this is not the right time for me. Why? Because the souls are ready to be harvested and brought into the bands or the church. Don't say that. By the time you go, some of them have perished. Do you know that Harvest can perish. How many of you know that? If the banana is ripe and you don't cut it on time, what happens? The person will eat it up. The devil will cause some deaths in your family. And that family member would have died without the law. So don't say that. Don't give the excuse you are giving. I'll go tomorrow. I don't have time. You have all the time in this world. Two hours on Saturday will change nothing in your life. Two hours on Saturdays will not change anything. Or two hours on Sunday will not change anything. Very soon I'm going to declare Sunday as a Sabbath day. 
What it means is that from six to six. If you think that Saturday is not good for you, Sabbath Sunday, from six to six, you have to go and work for the Lord. That one too, if you like, give excuse. Yeah, you can clap. You can clap. Are you here? As much as I agree that there are people who are going to school, working and going to school and so forth. But you cannot make that as an excuse. School closes on Sunday by afternoon. Four to six. Don't tell me you are tired. Find time and go and preach the gospel. You know why? I'm going to read that to you right now. Anytime you are giving excuse the devil is robbing you of your wages. Give it to me. 4.33 And he that reaped received wages and gathered fruit unto life eternal. He that reaped Receive it what? Oh, come on. He that reaped, or he that winneth so, he that goes, goes to preach the, preach the gospel and brings in the soul, he will earn what? Wages. He received what? Wages. Today I'm explaining to some of you the source of your poverty. Of frustration. One day a daughter of mine asked me, Papa, what is it that I've done? I've served the Lord. I've done everything. And today, look at me. One, I'm not married. Two, I don't have a child. Uh, my work is not going off. Everything. Me, 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 me alone. What is it? The Lord had not revealed this to me then. I would have put it in her face. I would have pointed it to her face. The one who wins soul receives wages. 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 I don't think some of you want wages. Wages mean pay. Pay. <laughs> one day I was listening to Bishop Oyedepo. He said, when the second born came, a boy. He asked God, how should I name the boy? And you should, uh, Jesus, uh, the Lord said to him, name him Jesus bear me Jesus bear me in the, in the Yoruba language. Meaning, Jesus pays me. Literal translation. Jesus pays me. You think that the Lord doesn't pay us. If you don't know, may the Lord forgive your ignorance. But God pays. I say God pays. He that win a soul is what? Wise. Wisdom. Some of you don't know that it is wisdom that makes people to, to last long in whatever venture they are doing, whether it's a farmer, a business person, and whatever it is. Some of you here, you lack wisdom. You lack wisdom. Amen. So when you are saying your things and you think that I have been heard, I have heard all. I've heard. <laughs> but because of wisdom, I'll be quiet. I'll be quiet. I love every one of you here. And if you bring your son or your daughter to me, and because of some money, you want to give your daughter to such a person, I'll tell you in the face not because of my personal instincts. It is the word of God. Light has nothing to do with darkness. How can you marry and when your husband is 
come to uh, uh, to 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 <laughs> oh Lord have mercy you know what I mean on the <coughs> honeymoon and after that you follow money and the next thing that unless there is some uh, what is the strongest alcohol martini or what? I don't care. I hear that Putin, Putin, Putin's uh, uh, Russia, their, 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 their gene is the strongest. That is why when Putin cuts, this is a joke, it's a joke. He cuts one glass, then <laughs> the whole world is in trouble. <laughs> anyway, let's close, okay? I should give you one more before we close. Daniel. Daniel 12. Hey, chapter 3. Daniel 12, verse 3. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of... It's not everybody that is wise, so... So not everybody. They that be wise. When I appealed to Matrice, she heeded the instruction. And she yesterday we were about six, six of us. Fifi was there, Lawrence was there, Matrice was there, Emmanuel was there, Pastor Quay was there. It was great. The souls plenty. Nobody had resistance. This Imam was preaching like something else. So they that, give it to me again, they that be wise, that somebody will be wise this morning and listen to instruction. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. How many of you have looked into the skies in the night before and you see stars all over? There are stars in football, there are stars in, in education. There are stars in many things. It means distinction. It means distinction. It means distinction. They that be wise, give it to me, they that be wise shall shine. But see, the wisdom comes by winning souls. We've read it. Those who win souls shall be wise. And if you become wise, you will shine like the brightness of the firmament, like a star. And they that turn many to righteousness, to turn somebody to righteousness is getting the person born again. They that turn many to righteousness, and they that turn many to righteousness, they will be as the stars forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. Your business will not collapse. Amen. Hey, your family will not fall apart. Amen. Nothing will fall apart. Amen. They that win soul, apart from being bright, like the firmament, they will be as stars forever and ever. Yeah. The devil is preventing stars in the church. I, I've been having some meetings on, on Thursdays with my son and 
a friend of his, and we pray. And a certain project, the friend owns that project, and my son is helping my, that friend, his friend, to execute. It's something that will change the whole continent of Africa. Presidents have bought in, Ghana government has bought in into the program. U.S., we are, they are waiting for U.S. to buy into it. It's a big thing. BBC has brought, bought into it. Harvard has bought into it. And when they were praying, God said that, listen, what you are doing is not just a project. It's a commission. So last Thursday when we met and we prayed, I said, I pray that when you succeed, you come back to the church. I wasn't talking about money. And come and give the knowledge of wealth creation in the church. We need stars in the church. I say we need stars in the church. Amen. Did you hear me? We need what? So whatever you're doing, you will shine in that area. So when we are talking about authority, then when people come, you are the person to speak on that subject. God hasn't called me to do business. He gave me the teaching of the word. And that's what I can do. When it comes to wealth creation, God will call some of you to create wealth. And you are supposed to come back and teach the church how to create wealth. Because God has made you wise. And you will be shining forever and ever as a star. Your wealth shall not be cut short. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It begins with winning souls. Next time, when we are serving communion here, and you are coming to eat, check yourself. I say what? Check yourself. There is power, power, wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, wonder-working power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that? Yeah. One day I came back from school and my mom was, my mom had gone home to go and minister to the mother who was on a believer and she came back, you know, uh, uh, attacked and all her skin was becoming, you know, greenish, greenish, greenish. I saw it myself. They've gone to the hospital, did everything. The mother had some sore. Not that it was there in her old age. The mother was close to 100 years. So that last moment, this sore came. They've done everything it was. My mother went there and started speaking on tongue. They said, no, a crow. They said, this, this sore, you, you, you will heal. After what they've done more than six months, the sore got healed. When my, my mother was leaving, as soon as she got to Accra, she started having patches on her skin. They did everything. It was not working. I came back from school. I saw the thing. I called my, a friend of mine, SK. <laughs> and then the two of us, we met. We put my mother in the hall there. Pay, 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 pay. Took the blood. Took the blood. Save her the communion. mess my hand with the, this thing. Smeared her. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever you are, you will go. Three days. Three days. Three days. 
there's power in the blood. I said, there's power in the blood. Whatever weakness you have about shame and inability to communicate the gospel and the devil is taking advantage and taking away your wages, your wisdom, and you shining like a star today. Anytime you come to take the communion, ask God. Ask God and the blood to help you overcome that weakness in the name of Jesus Christ. The church cannot thrive in so winning without prayer. Next week I'll continue. Rise up. When Peter and Cole were forbidden, as soon as they left, they went into their closet and they lifted up their hands. They said, Lord, behold the threatening. What is it that is threatening you from preaching the gospel? The same thing is threatening your wages. It's threatening your wisdom. It's threatening you from shining as a star. It's threatening you from shining as a star. This morning, this morning, I want you to lift up your hands. It's about you. Jesus said, I'll build my church. I'll build Pastor Spencer. I'll build Emmanuel. And the gates of hell will not prevail against Emmanuel. If Emmanuel's wages are under attack, his wisdom, Emmanuel has to pray. And say, Father, behold the threatening. Behold the threatening. And the Bible says they lifted up their hands. And when they prayed, the whole place was shaking. The whole place was shaking. There will be a shaking in your life this morning. I said, there will be a shaking in your life this morning. There will be a shaking in your life this morning. Lift up your hands. Koraba Shata. Pray. Whatever is threatening you. Shame. Fear. Whatever it is. It's threatening the gospel and the word of life upon your life. But indirectly threatening your wages. He that reapeth receiveth wages. You are not, your inability to preach the gospel is the enemy attacking your wages. Is an, the enemy attacking your wages. Lift up your hands. Open your mouth. I want to hear you pray. If somebody is standing by you and you cannot hear the person pray, shake the person. Tell the person, Pastor said we should pray. Pray. Let me hear you pray. Let me hear you pray. Open your mouth. Listen to me. Listen to me. Sometimes when the devil has overpowered you, let us pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Hey, I said we should pray. I'm not saying thank the Lord. I say pray. You are under attack. Your wages is under attack. Your wisdom is under attack. He that winneth soul is wise. Your wisdom is under attack. Open your mouth and pray out. Shout unto the Lord and say, Lord, save me. Save my wages. Save my wisdom. Open your mouth and pray. Karo shata bada brados ke de bedea. Rando breke te brados abrada ka de brodoa. Rende breke te brada basho te rebrede kaya. Randa balo brada ka shaba de brada baya. Mama mado le broko shaba le brada baya. Raba baba ba. Mata la ba de breke ba la ba da le broko sha la ba ba le ke te le ba 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 le broko sha da la ba ba le re ba 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 bo re ba 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 sha ka ba da bra ka ba le broko sha ka ba da ba de ra ba 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 be ka tan da la bra ka da la ba bra ka sha da bre de ke te le bro do ra ba ta ka ba ra ta ba la ba ba Rabba, 
The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, If the gospel be hid, it is hidden because the God of this world has blinded them from seeing the glorious gospel, the light of the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, so winning. There's a battle to fight. God has commanded you, instructed you to go and preach the gospel. As you go, there will be opposition. The devil will first oppose you from going. Number two, when you go, the people that you preach to, the Bible says that Satan is fighting hard to blind them from seeing. From seeing. So we cannot successfully reach out to people when we don't wrestle. We don't fight this battle. So some of them, you have to fight. You have to fight to bring them. And it is worth it. It is worth fighting for the souls of men. This is why the Bible says the one who reaps receives wages. Those of you who are fighting this afternoon, this morning with me, as we fight and we wrestle them from that blindness, there will be wages for you. Amen. Lift up your hand and resist the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and you will flee from you. Let's resist the devil on behalf of the souls who have not seen the Lord. Resist the devil this morning. Resist him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Rabba 
We resist the powers, the spiritual wickedness in high places, the rulers of this darkness who has blindfolded souls of men from seeing the glorious light of the gospel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen. we resist you all we resist you all and we command you to lose your hold take the veil off their faces Father, cause them to be ready for the gospel. Amen. This week, anybody we speak to, cause their hearts to be ready for the gospel. La bro shake tarabadoka. Rasa kaba ketalababa. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We draw them from hellfire. We draw them from the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen. And you shall be my witnesses. Lift up your hands as I make this declaration. As many of you who has received the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost today in this house before angels, I declare there is nothing like being shy anymore. There's nothing like being timid anymore. Amen. There's nothing like I don't know what to say anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Holy Ghost speak through you with power, with signs, as you deliver souls from the hand of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your hands up. The enemy that is reaping your wages and does not want you to reap or receive your wages because you are not interested in, in reaping. He that reapeth receiveth wages. Today, any one of you this week as you join the sonar meetings and you preach including those that we preached to last, yesterday I decree your wages will not be hindered. Amen. Satan cannot withhold your, rich, your, your wages. Amen. Satan cannot withhold your wages. Amen. Satan, you cannot withhold their wages. Amen. Satan, you cannot withhold their wages. Amen. Satan, I forbid you from withholding their riches. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot forbid them from becoming wise. He that winneth soul is wise. 
May the wisdom of God come upon you. May the wisdom of God come upon you. May the wisdom of God come upon you. Make good decisions. Make good choices. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make good choices for your children. Make good choices for yourself. In the name of Jesus. Make good choices in your business deliberations. In the name of Jesus. Even in academia, you will make good choices. Thank you, Lord. Father, I give you glory. Every activity of the enemy against this project of bringing in the harvest, we declare it failed. We bind all forces within and without in the name of Jesus. May the joy of the Lord fill the hearts of each and every one as we rake in the harvest to the glory of your wonderful name. I know you are with, this, with us. You will go out with us. You will let signs follow us. You will let wonders follow us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the battle that is won now and forevermore. And all the saints shall shout, Amen. Come on. Give some glory to God. Give some glory to God. good Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace be established in all realms of your life. You are going out. You are coming in. Your relationship, your domestic affairs, your business affairs, in every neighborhood may there be peace between you and your neighbors in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace of life that you have inherited be multiplied in your life throughout this season in your life. Go and come back with a testimony that the grace of God is authentic and is working in your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for joining. We hope you were blessed. Great grace, great power, great riches, great mercies are all yours.